Hello, my name is Mark and I am G-Code Tutor. In this new series of programming lessons made purely for YouTube, we're going to take a look at how we're going to write a program for this bush from start to finish on a CNC lathe. Each video in this series is going to focus on each operation. So in this video, for example, we're going to focus on our first tool, the roughen tool, and we're going to rough out this part. And then each lesson will have a different operation until we finally completed the program to make this bush. Now with engineering, we tend to look at things either black or white. The part is either correct or it's not correct. But when we're programming, there is millions of ways to write a program. In fact, it's unlimited. So everyone has their own style and technique, and we will discuss this as we go over the program, and I will look at different ways we could approach this as I write my code. But this is the way I would write my code to make this part, but there is unlimited ways we can approach this problem. Now I should probably mention that you shouldn't type this program direct into your machine and assume it's going to work. And we should never do that with any program. Even a proven program, we should do a first run through with the machine running very slowly, possibly with no material in the machine, so we can make sure the program is acting the way we expect it to before we hit that start button and walk away to get a coffee. This program is also untested. I have not ran this program in a lathe. I'm writing this purely as an introduction and education program and not something we should punch into our machine and assume everything is going to be fine. Okay, so let's start writing G-code. So I'm gonna approach this by having my zero position at the front of the part here. So this is our data position where all the dimensions run from. So we will call this our Z0 and our X0 position on our lathe here. In the old days, when we used to program our CNC machines, we used to number each line individually. These days, we don't tend to do that, but we do use the N number to define each section of the program. Just in case we need to jump into the program or search for features, we can just search for N1, for example, and it would come up with our rough and tool sequence. So I still use N numbers, but I use them at the beginning of each block only and not for each individual line. Okay, so anything in brackets is a operator's note that is not read by the machine controls. So N1 and then rough turn in brackets just tells the operator that this next section of code, this block of code is going to be a rough turn operation. And we can use the N value there, the N1 to search for this. Now this line of code is our safety line. This puts the machine into a safe situation before we run the rest of the code. Now this is really useful to have in our programs because if we search through the program and we're halfway through cutting another section and we decide to rerun our roughing cycle, this would put the machine into a safe state to run from this section of code. Now there's lots of options and lots of things we can put in our safety line. This depends on the machine and our needs. So on this line here, I have G54, which calls up our datum position that we've preset within the machine. G21 is our metric system. So I'm using metric dimensions for this. If we were working in Imperial, we would use G20. Now G80 cancels any active cycles. So if we are halfway through a drilling cycle, for example, and we stop and we come back to the rough turn cycle, now this would cancel that drilling cycle so we don't need to worry about the machine thinking it's drilling holes and not roughing. And then finally G40 cancels any cutter compensation we may have active. We might also see G90 or G91 on this line to put the machine into absolute or incremental positioning system as well. And there's actually a lot of different things we can put in our safety line and everyone and every machine and every part has its own needs for this. So this T0101, this is our tool 01, and it's calling upon our offsets and geometry for this tool that is stored under 01 also. So we're calling up position one on our tool turret with T01 there, and then we're calling upon the tool geometry and offsets with the second 01. Now this is why I had N1 at the beginning. I like to keep my N numbers the same as the tool numbers. It just makes things very easy to search because we know 
what that end number is going to be because it will match our tool number. And MO6, this is our automated tool change. When the lathe reads this code, it will rotate the turret so tool one is in the correct position to start cutting. Now, if we are cutting with constant surface cutting speed, we need to tell the machine not to exceed a certain RPM because as that tool reaches the center point of our spindle line, it's going to accelerate to an infinite speed and we don't want that. That's gonna be dangerous for our chuck. So G50 is our spindle speed clamp and we define a speed with S value there. So the machine will never rotate above 2,500 RPM if we put this line of code in our program. So G96 is our constant surface cutting speed command. And then we add a surface speed with an S value. And finally, MO3 turns the spindle on in a clockwise direction. So the cutting edge of the tool is removing the material. So now with everything set up, we can start moving our axes around. So G00 is our rapid travel command. And I'm moving here to X62. So I'm assuming our bar size is 60 millimeters diameter. Now I'm leaving 20 millimeters on stock there from our major diameter of our bush is only 40 millimeters. So that's why I've gone 62. So we've got two millimeters clearance above that bar size. And Z five millimeters there, this brings our tool five millimeters off the front face of our part. So again, we're wrapping it in with plenty of clearance. Now MO8 turns on our coolant. So with our tool in a safe starting position, we can now feed in and face off that front of the bar so it's nice, flat, square and parallel. And we do that by using G01, our feed rate command. So G01 Z0 is going to feed our tool into Z0 position along the Z axis there. And we're using a feed rate of 0.1 millimeters per revolution. So with our tool in the correct position along the Z axis, we can now feed down and face off the front of our part. So I'm using X minus 0.2. So we're going 0.2 of a millimeter just past that center line to remove any pips, providing of course our tool is accurately set up on that center line. And I'm slowing my feed rate down a little bit here. So we're going down to 0.05 feed rate. So with the front of our bar faced off, we can now rapid the tool to a safe position before we start our roughing cycle. So going back to G00, our rapid travel command, I'm moving an X and Z to a safe working position away from our part. Okay, so now it's time to use our roughing cycle, our G71 roughing cycle. Now there's different options we can use for roughing cycles such as this, and I'm not gonna go into detail over how the G71 works in this course, but you can pop over to my website where I have a free article and a video that goes into a lot more depth on how the G71 works, and I'll link to that below in the description. So in this case, I'm using the two line G71. We can also use a single line G71 cycle, and this will depend on your machine controls, which one we would use. Now, the only two parts of this I'm going to explain at this moment is the P value and the Q value here. So what these values do is this sets a position in our program where the sub program lies. So this calls upon some programs between an N100 and N200 value that defines our subprogram, and we can reuse that later when we come to use our finishing cycle. So that's why I'm using a subprogram in our program here. Now again, there's more about subprograms over on my website in the article section. So as our roughing cycle reads P100, it looks through the program for where N100 lies, and then it's gonna to jump to that position and start reading our program there. Now this could be any number, it doesn't have to be 100. We could say P512, as long as the end value is 512, it will know where the start of our sub-program is. Okay, so we're starting off our sub-program and then we're rapid traveling to X29 millimeters. So that's one millimeter below our diameter of our part. Now we have to remember we are using a lathe here, so that is a diameter and not a radius. So we're coming down to half a millimeter in real movement uh, down our face of our part, 
below the main diameter and not one millimeter because we are looking at diameters and not radiuses on our lathe. So our tool along the Z axis was currently two millimeters off the face of our part. So on this line, we're going to switch over to our feed rate commands, G01. Now, whenever we issue a G01, we have to have a feed rate on the first line. So we have a feed rate at the end there of 0.2. Now, G42 is our cutter compensation, and we set this information in the machine controls. So on my lathe here, the tools lie at the back of the machine and not in the front, so we would use G42 for our cutter compensation. And I'm moving to Z0, the front of our part. So the tool would be moving to that front face along the Z axis. Now G01 is still active, so we don't need to state it again or a feed rate unless we need to change our feed rate. So we're now moving to X 30 millimeters. So that's the diameter of our part. So we're coming up from X 29 to X 30 and we're coming along in Z by half a millimeter. So what this is doing is it's turning a half a millimeter chamfer on the front of our bush. Now we can make this smaller, of course, and I'm just using it to break the edge so we don't have a sharp edge here. Now remember we're working in diameter and not radius, which is why our X is moving in one millimeter and our Z is only moving in 0.5 to give us that 45 degree angle. So now I'm plotting our point to our corner there in between the flange and the diameter, and we're moving minus 30 millimeters in Z. So our overall part is 40 millimeters minus our 10 millimeters for the flange, and that's where I get my 30 millimeter Z length from. And now I'm coming up in X to our major diameter size there. Now, as we're doing this, the machine will not be cutting this profile straight away. It will be using this profile as a guide to write its own roughing sequence. And that's the great thing about the G71 roughing cycle. Now, when I'm coming to my final position in Z here, I'm coming five millimeters past the end of the part. Now, the reason I am doing this is because later in these videos, we will be parting off our bush. And when we do, that extra five millimeters will give a leading to our parting off tool. So we have a little bit of room there for our parting off tool to fit in to part off. Now we could be using a two and a half millimeter, three, four or five millimeter parting off blade. So I'm coming past five millimeters, assuming we are using a five millimeter parting off blade later in this course. Now I'm feeding away in X to a safe working position. Now remember our stock bar size was 60 millimeters. So I'm coming two millimeters past our stock bar size just to give us some clearance there. Now we have the last line of our subroutine. So our N200 refers to the Q200 back on the second G71 line. Again, this value can be anything as long as those two numbers match. So we could have Q312 as long as this end value is 312. This defines the last line of our subroutine. Okay, so G40 removes any cutter compensation. So we had G42 we were using, this turns that off. So the machine doesn't allow for that tall nose radius compensation that was applied by the G42. X62, although our axis is already at 62 millimeters on the X, I've stated it again here, probably wasn't needed, but it doesn't do any harm to state it again. And our Z there, five millimeters, brings the tool five millimeters from the front of our part to the right. So this is a nice safe distance to feed our tool back to. And I'm using a higher feed rate here. I'm using F200. So instead of using a rapid command here, I'm just using a feed command with a very high feed rate. Now we are outside of our subroutine and I'm moving the tool back to its tool change position. So G53 is the datum I am using for our tool change position, our machine datum. So I'm switching datums and I'm telling it to go to X0, Z0. Now this will put the tool turret back to its tool change position. And I'm using MO9 on this line to turn off our coolant. MO5 stops our spindle. Now, I always like to leave the machine in constant spindle speed and not constant surface cutting speed. So G97 puts our lathe back into that mode. MO1 is our optional stop. So if we wish to stop the machine at this point and we have our optional 
the stop button selected, the machine will stop to allow us to inspect the part. So that's the first part of our Bush program complete, our roughing cycle. And in the following videos of this series, we will make the other features of this part. Now, I must say again, be very careful when you use someone else's program because every machine is set up slightly differently. So what I always recommend when teaching G-code or learning G-code is to take this as a lesson feature and then compare it to other programs in your machine or in your machine manual to see how your machine will handle this code. For example, Morisiki lathes use Fanic, but they use their own version. So you may find things will work differently on that machine. And the same is Akuma machines. So we do tend to have slightly different G-code, but the theory is generally the same. So with learning any programming language, whether it's G-code or JavaScript, for example, we have to be very aware that there is different versions and it may behave differently on your particular machine. But saying that, we all have to learn G-code. So I teach a generic version of G-code that the theory can be applied to anything. We just have to cross-reference it with existing programs on your machine to see the differences. Now I've very quickly scanned over this program, but for more in-depth programming knowledge and full G-Code training, pop over to my website, gcodetutor.com, where I have a range of courses to fit any G-Code programming need. And I also teach a lot of engineering machine shop maths courses there, as well as CAD CAM using Fusion 360. So pop over to my website, and have a look. There's lots of free articles over there, plus the courses which you can enroll in.